All right now, the next step, after I've used Google Auto Draw to find references, there are other ways we can find references. So I've made a folder, and I gathered all of my screenshots into the folder under exercise one. So I have these seven screenshots. I think I would use at least five of these, and I, I can think of a way I might combine them. But if I want some other resources, as I have in the assignment, I'm not limited to just using AutoDraw. I can also use Pixabay. And so Pixabay is a vector and image a Creative Commons open search site. So artists like myself donate images to this site for people to use for various purposes across the world. And it's free for people to use. So if I put in tree line art, so I have found resources using Pixabay and all of the Pixabay images are under what they call a Pixabay license, which is free for commercial use. And we'll talk more about these attribution requirements, but I like this site because attribution is not required. So you can make modifications to the content any way you like. And these are the only uh, limitations to it. And basically, they just don't want you to sell unaltered copies or redistribute someone else's Pixabay images or videos on other stock platforms, right? But we're using it to create our own, our own artwork. And then, of course, the other image search engine is Google Images. And so if I look up tree here, I'll get a lot of results, millions and millions of results. So I need to limit it somehow. So to do that under Google Images, I go to Tools. And under Size, I'm going to say Large. That's going to be a 1,000 pixels by a 1,000 pixels or larger. By Color, I'm going to say Black and White. And then you'll see these options. Sometimes you'll get these. I want a silhouette. And what's funny is the Pixabay ones will probably show up here as well, but also ones that are copyrighted. So the other thing I can do is under tools, I can go to usage rights and look for only Creative Commons licenses. And you'll see a lot of these come from Pixabay. And then some come from other sources, like a free vector site, a public domain site, and so on. But we're just looking for the line art. We can also go under type and say line drawing. So with all of those limitations of size, color, license, and line drawing, that will make our search a lot more productive, even though some weird things slip in. Some randomness definitely slips in. All right. So now that we have a lot of resources, What we can do is the next step of the project, which is to gather our resources together and bring them into Photopea. Now you can use Photopea on any computer that has an internet connection. And if account is red, it means you're not logged in. And if you wanted to kind of save your progress, 
you want to log in, which you can do with just an email. It is free. And then what I'm going to do is say open from computer. I'm just going to follow the directions that are given in the assignment. I'm going to go to my downloads. Let's see. I'm going to take those. And I'm going to take the tree that I think has the most promise for being used. And I think it's this one. So you're basically going to pick your most prominent image. So what I say in the directions, your single strongest line art image, the thing you want to kind of build your composition around. So for this, I use the fist. Then I want to change the canvas size around it to give me more space. I want to give myself eight by 10 inches. So you see how it's the, the size of the image is going to be mapped right to the edges of the image content. So I'm going to go to image canvas size and I'm going to switch it to inches and I'm going to expand it. So eight by 10 inches would make it smaller. So I'm going to make it larger. So let's double that. Let's make it 16 by 20 inches. And we'll learn a lot more about how to manipulate resolutions and things later. Basically, this image is 16 by 20 inches, but it's only at screen resolution, which is 72 pixels per inch. What we want is a minimum of 8 by 10 inches at screen resolution. Say OK. Now I can go to File, Open in Place, and bring in my other line art elements. So Open, go to File, Open in Place. And now I'm going to go to my desktop. Go to my digital art folder where I'm keeping my screenshots. And I'm going to bring in some of these other elements. And they'll come in as new layers. Then just hit return. Repeat that until you have everything you want. You don't need to resize them or change them yet. You just need to bring them all into the same place. If I hold down Command on my Mac, I can even place multiples. All right, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. You need five, five or more. All right, so you'll see those layers in the side. You'll also see that each layer, except for that first one, has a little box in the corner of its icon. That means it's a smart object, which keeps you from taking content away. And what do I need to take away? I need to make it so we don't see all of the white. Okay, so there's a few ways to do this, but one of the easiest ways is to play with blending modes. And the blending mode, we're gonna change all of our layers, except for our bottom layer, two is called multiply. What multiply will do is it will layer them all up so that the white is invisible.
and that makes it a little bit hard to see. So let me turn off the eyeball now. So I can just work with it one layer at a time. So here's where we get to the creative part. We're going to use the move tool, which is right there. It's at the very top. It's a lot like auto draw. And we are going to select a layer. In this case, it's the cactus, right? And this allows us to move it and place things in different places. And then we have to learn how to resize things. And that's with the transform controls. So to transform, we're going to click on edit transform and we'll get a transform box around our layer. So for instance, if I just use the cactus, I select that layer, I can click on transform controls and then they'll automatically be there. Or I can uncheck transform controls and go to edit transform. I like, I like free transform. And that allows me to stretch it, to rotate it, to get it where I want. I think I want it placed about right here. Next for this, I'm going to use my move button and transform and I want this to be kind of the top of the tree hit return next the baggage I want that edit free transform you can also see the shortcut for it which is control T. If you're using a Mac and using Photoshop, it's command T. And so sometimes I'll forget, but you don't want command T because on an internet browser that just opens up a new tab. So control T. And I think I want the baggage maybe right on top of the roots, just like that. I'm lining it up. So I want to have the baggage, the cactus arms, and bristles uh, moving into kind of the figure and head of the woman. You have the the tree branches kind of behind it all. Now I'm going to use the transform tools. I'll show you the shortcut. Control T gives you a transform box right away. And these are going to act as the leaves of the tree. As she tells her story, she is less a victim and regains agency in her own growth. So that's what I want to tell with these speech bubbles. The other nice thing about transforming is that you can right click within the transform box and get more options, like flip it horizontally. flip it vertically. And there are really fun techniques like warping that we'll get to later. Let me hit return. Last one. 
control T, 